Hello, welcome back once again. Uh, I have a project that is not complete. It's about, I think it's about 95% done. So I'm, I'm going to show you and maybe I'll do a quick follow up later on when the last 5% is complete. So the project I'm working on at the moment is this. Uh, this is the USS Enterprise E, a sovereign class starship from the Star Trek movies First Contact, Insurrection and Nemesis. I'm trying to make the First Contact version, there's some subtle differences between the other ones but to be honest I don't really care as long as you can look at it and go hey that's the Enterprise E, I'm pretty happy. So this is mostly a 3D print, it's about 99% 3D printed with a little bit of scratch building, a little bit of modification and some electronics. So let's have a look at uh, its party trick first. So I'll just reduce the lighting so you can see what's going on here. This whole thing has about a million Christmas lights inside it because I love Christmas lights. They're easy to work with and they're very, very cheap. So yeah, uh, we've got lights and we've got engineering hull lights. We've got, uh, we have a main deflector that's under there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, we've got impulse engines. Uh, we've got ram scoops. And of course we have warp engines. So all of that is working pretty flawlessly, which is far more than I expected. Uh, I will explain a little bit about how I've made those various things work. So let's have a look at the ship. So all of the lights are still on. Some of them are a little bit difficult to see with the room lights still up. So a bit of background on this thing. So the model is 3D printed and it's based on a design that's on Thingiverse by a guy called Nenzilla. And the model fundamentally is great. There's a lot of good things about it. It's not super accurate and that's not Nenzilla's fault because I know he didn't design it, he's just a guy who's uploaded it. I think maybe he made the cuts in order to make it fit together. I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, I don't know the origin of the actual model. I suspect it might be from a Star Trek game or something. I don't know, but it's not quite an accurate Sovereign class model. The engines in particular are wildly different. The bridge module is not quite right and it's missing a couple of really significant details on the saucer, but it's no big deal because I was planning on modifying it anyway. So what I've actually done is I have scrapped the original engines and made new ones. I've scrapped the bridge module and made a new one. And I've, yeah, I've added some additional details using scratch building after the fact. So love the model. Uh, one of the things I really like about the, the kit essentially that Nenzilla's got on uh, Thingiverse is that it's, I think there's 86 pieces if you print it as provided. They fit together using uh, skinny sticks, which are like, ta-da! Uh, they're popsicle sticks, but extra skinny. Um, I, I say that knowing that an American viewer is going, I know what skinny sticks are, but uh, I, I didn't know what skinny sticks are because they're not very common in Australia. So I actually found some, and that was cool. So it fits together using those sticks, and the thing is completely robust, just with little wooden sticks in the gaps. So you, you, you fit them all in the little, uh, tabs and slots arrangement and put the thing together you can pick it up with one hand it's it's pretty impressive engineering so I really like the model it's a great starting point I can see that there's a bunch of people on some of the Facebook groups that I follow who have already printed the same model and they seem to be going great guns with it so yeah totally recommend that one if you want to print a sovereign class model uh, you might want to make some changes if you want it to be more accurate also I actually shrunk mine down by 80% because I don't need a four foot model of the Enterprise E three feet is plenty so these are the engines that I have redesigned because I wasn't happy with the ones that came with the uh, with the 3D files. And I've actually designed them. They're, they're not quite accurate either for a couple of reasons, um, which are deliberate. So I've designed them to take a 20 millimeter acrylic tube down here. Uh, this is actually the, the cavity in here was designed in, in 3D to accommodate a 20 millimeter acrylic tube. And I hopped on eBay and I bought about three meters of tube because I knew that I would end up screwing it up many, many times. I only need 60 centimeters to do this, so I had plenty to get it wrong. Recommend doing that every time you buy stuff. Um, and I ended up just frosting them and the lights on the inside of these are actually 12 volt lights that are the kind that douchebags put around their headlights on their cars. So you actually get these LED strips and they wire them you wire them into your car and you can have like BMW style LED strips around your, your front headlights. Don't do that. Put them in your Starship instead. 
Uh, the bridge module, there's a little bit of white overspray there that's driving me crazy. I need to clean that up at some point. 95% complete, remember. Uh, the bridge module has also been redesigned. You can see the, the windows on the bridge module there are working reasonably well. The lifeboat details are actually laser printed. Now in the last round of airbrush painting that I did on this, which was to paint these windows in, the ones that aren't lit, uh, I actually had a bit of a, an issue with masking and it's torn up some of the the, the lifeboats, so I need to recreate the lifeboats and reattach them, but that's a project for another day. These details here, the raised details around the bridge, are actually pieces of styrene that I've cut and, and put on there. I have a photo of those before they got painted. Another detail that's unfortunately missing from the, uh, the 3D files on Thingiverse are the phaser strips. So I've actually created my own 3D printed phaser strips to go on here, and they seem to work okay. So all of the lighting is Christmas lights. Here's a couple of photos of the inside of the, uh, the saucer, which is absolutely jam-packed with LED Christmas lights. Um, there's actually not that many windows that are lit, and I'll explain why that is in a second. Uh, but there's a lot of lights in there, and uh, it works okay. The, uh, the front of the engines actually have, the, sorry, the, the ram scoops, the Boussard collectors, if you will, uh, actually have two colors of lights in them. You can kind of see that here. There's a, a magenta light just here and a red light here. And I've actually mixed those together in the hopes of recreating that kind of uh, murky patterned effect that's on the actual ship model and 3D computer models that are in the movies. So that turned out quite nicely. Um, oh, I appear to have lost lighting on the engines there. That's better. So uh, the, I haven't fully wired the engines up yet, so they're just sort of very crudely powered from a 12 volt power supply. So they do occasionally fall out and stop working. Windows, windows are a thing. So uh, I kind of made some bad decisions in doing the windows and I would recommend you not do what I did. So uh, w what I wanted to do, my grand plan that I had in my head was to finish off all of the surfaces on the 3D print, make it all smooth and beautiful, masking tape the outside of the ship, and then do a pour of clear resin from the inside, which would hopefully just settle down into all of the little window holes, stop at the masking tape, and leave me, leave me with a nice smooth finish on the outside of the ship. Anyone who's worked with any kind of resin before is going to know that that didn't work so well. Uh, it worked to a degree out of the probably 200 windows that are on this ship. Uh, maybe a hundred of them are okay. The rest have air bubbles in them or they're just completely opaque or whatever. Uh, I don't have a better solution to that. Uh, the windows as you print it, if you print it at the, the four foot size that uh, Nenzilla's model comes in at, or you shrink it down a little bit, the windows are still going to be way too big for fiber optics. So my suggestion, if you are going to print this model and attempt to light it, is don't put anything in the windows at all. Because if you have a look at the rear of my model, just here, you can see that some of the best looking windows are actually the ones that have nothing in them. So these ones here uh, didn't take any resin or the resin didn't run into them or whatever. So those are the best. These ones on the bridge, which look really cool, actually ended up fully, uh, fully containing resin and they look great. Uh, so that was the effect I was going for all over, but with the air bubbles and what have you, it just didn't work out. But yeah, it's not perfect and I'm not losing any sleep over it. It's fine. And here's the underside of the ship, which as you can probably tell, is not exactly finished. The model is going to hang on the wall, so the bottom of the ship is not actually going to be visible. So again, I'm a lazy person and I'm probably not going to fully detail the underside of the ship. It's not going to come off the wall once it's up there. It's, it's a display piece, so that's where it's going to live. However, there is one feature under the ship that has turned out unusually awesome, and I want to show you what that looks like. It's a shame that no one's really going to see it because the deflector dish looks amazing. Uh, I printed the piece in, I believe it's called natural PLA, uh, which is trans... I'm not going to say transparent, it's not transparent, it's translucent at best, uh, but yeah, it transmits quite a bit of light. So uh, the 3D print turned out quite decent. I printed it as, you know, as, as detailed as my printer would allow, and then I've airbrushed it with some really dark copper, which kind of matches the uh, original model, and then I have very lightly sanded off all of the surface detail so that it becomes translucent again, and then when it's, uh, when it's in place, it looks a lot like 
the deflector dish. So that's pretty cool. That's that's another piece that I've actually upgraded from the uh, the original pieces that were included in the the Thingiverse files. And here I am on a completely different day because I realized that I didn't actually talk anything about paint on this thing. So paint, it's painted mostly with these things, which is pretty brutal, but it works. Uh, I've done some of it with an airbrush, but the vast majority of it was painted with rattle cans using whatever colors I've got. Uh, here are some photos from the process of masking it. I didn't film any of it because it took hours upon hours upon hours, and I just couldn't be bothered to time-lapse quite that much work. So it involved a ton of masking with some really narrow masking tape. I just ended up cutting strips from some much thicker tape and masking the heck out of it. And then once it was masked, paint it. And some parts I'm really not happy with, like this bit, which looks terrible, and these bits, which look awful. But it's okay. I will either get around to fixing them or I'll learn to live with it. One or the other. I ended up painting the phaser strips a kind of dark, really dark gray color and then dusting them with rose gold so they have a nice sort of golden sheen to them, which is quite nice. Oh yeah, my attempt to mask up the impulse engines also worked terribly, but she still looks pretty cool. I'm thinking I might actually paint over the impulse engines with a complete coat of transparent red just to hide that a little bit. That's cool. It'll reduce the effectiveness of the, uh, the lights, but that's okay. And they're already fairly dim. We'll get there. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do about hull markings. I don't really like using decal paper. I find it's a bit of a pain in the neck to work with. Uh, in the past, I've used transparent mailing labels. You can actually get full A4 sheets without individual stickers on them and you can laser print them and I find that they work quite well. Uh, the larger the scale of your model, the better they work. Obviously, if you've got something very tiny, um, it doesn't work so well, but here are some examples that I have used it on in the past. I used it for the markings on these little tiny space shuttles that I printed and yeah, it's not terrible. So maybe I'll use that for the, the hull markings, the Enterprise and NCC 1701E and what have you on here. But oh look, another bit that I need to fix, lovely. So thanks for watching, um, that's the Enterprise. So uh, that's the Enterprise, that's the video, and if you enjoyed it, um, you could subscribe. I don't know, I don't like pushing people to subscribe. Um, the button is there if you wish to avail yourself of it. If you don't, that's cool. Thanks for watching. Pretty uh, engineering impressive, so, Engineering impressive. Impressive engineering is the correct way to say that. It's pretty impressive engineering.